I'm Brian Vance, WorldBikeTracker.com. Today we're gonna break down the Motion Pro Rev2 Quick Turn Throttle Kit install on our 2015 through 18 STGR3 project bike. Okay, before I dive into the full install, let's talk about safety. Throttle operation is key, right? It's a safety item. If this thing sticks wide open, you're in for a bad day. Bodily injury, death, all those things are possible. If anything you see during this install makes you think, man, I'm not sure I can do this on my own bike, well then don't do it. Take it to a mechanic and pay to have it done. Trust me, it'll be worth the investment. Now let's talk about why would I want to install this Motion Pro on my bike and eliminate that super sweet stock throttle. Well, to get the throttle wide open quicker is the number one motivation. You can see we don't even have the biggest cam in here right now. And that is a very short throw. So it's going to take Max a whole lot less wrist rotation to open this to 100% throttle than the stock throttle. The Motion Pro Rev2 throttle kit is variable ratio you're able to select which cam makes the most sense for you going from the initial one the, the longest throw is 35 then we step to 40 45 i have the race cam in it the progressive cam that lands between the 45 and the biggest one the 50. by being progressive what that means is especially road racing or track day riding the initial input of the throttle, okay, doesn't open the blades aggressively. It, from this point forward, ramps up really hard. So when you're getting into the corner, your trail brake into the apex, and you go from brake to throttle, you can get on it more confidently, and it reduces the possibility of it unsettling the chassis by accelerating too aggressively at first. I've got this cam in my GSXR 1000 absolutely love it and that's why i put it in the bike that max would be riding as well other benefits that you pick up with this on the r3 there is a clearance issue between race body work and even stock body work when you go to install clip-ons woodcraft worked around that and created a set of clip-ons that didn't mount under the tree or above it's kind of right in between okay they help alleviate the overwhelming majority of that by installing this now, I could actually lower these clip-ons just a little bit if Max wants to be in a little more aggressive riding position. So now that opens the door to exploring that possibility as well. The OEM throttle and cable assembly, the switch pod and the throttle housing are one piece. Installing the Motion Pro Rev 2, you have to purchase the start-stop switch as well. There is a bike specific model that's available now for the R3. That's what I installed on here, so it's plug and play. It's super easy. On this motorcycle, I've eliminated the OEM key switch and installed the Woodcraft key switch eliminator. What that does is it makes the kill switch, not just the kill switch, but the main on and off switch as well. This Motion Pro start stop switch works perfectly with the woodcraft key switch eliminator i've already tested that on this bike and then i've ridden my gsxr 1000 with that installed and it worked great so that's known to function just right during this install we're going to show every single step that we use to install this one on our bike it's quite a process and like i said earlier it's important that you get every single step right big keys okay when you're all done everything's installed and you're buttoned up i want you to sweep the bars all the way to one extreme and check your throttle return make sure it is snappy come back to the middle same thing all the way to the other extreme same thing start the motorcycle let it idle and then sweep the bars back and forth if you hear any change in rpm Odds are you have the cables adjusted too tight. You're wanna, gonna wanna back off that a little bit. If they're too tight, as it pulls on the cable, even just lightly, it'll pick up RPM and accelerate. So check for that as well. I want you to double check and triple check the routing of the throttle cables and make sure there is no area of interference where it could be pinched, jammed, folded in half, any of that. 
If you follow the stock routing, odds are it's going to turn out just great. But I want you to upfront be very cognizant of all those things. And I'll give you just a couple little tips here too. On this bike, this is a full race bike now. He's going to go racing next year. We're doing track day, still a sport bike track time. This year we'll ride with him again next year, but he's going to do some wear stuff. He got his license June of 2018. So I'm starting to eliminate things from this bike that just are no longer necessary. Built into this start-stop switch, of course, is going to be the brake light switch wiring. The OEM master, I've removed the brake light switch from it. There's no need to let this pigtail hang off of it. So what I chose to do on my switch was to actually back the terminal ends out of the connector. It was really easy to do. They're both green wires. You can identify them super easy. And remember, this is if you choose to do this, this is up to you and at your own risk. I backed the terminals, pulled them out just to eliminate that right from Jump Street. Once again, the cam that I think works the best if you're track day riding or road racing is, is going to be that progressive cam, the orange colored cam. It's right in between the 45 and 50. It does a great job. Overall, this product, I really dig it. I've already used it on my GSX-R1000. They did a great job. This installed just as easy. Looks like it's going to be great. Also important, road test it before you really go and take it for a big ride. Whether you're a track rider or a street rider, just a short little ride, double checking everything, making sure it's smooth while you're riding, and then come back and take a good hard look before you take it out for that first really big session, first race, or first big ride. If you dig what you see so far, you want to see what it takes to get this installed on your R3, just stay tuned, we'll show you every step. Okay, now let's dive right into the install of the Rev2 throttle kit. I've got the bodywork off our R3. The reason I did that is that's going to look different for everybody. If you have stock bodywork, obviously the removal and reinstallation process is going to be a little different. Our race bodywork was already fit to this bike, so I've removed the upper, the lower, the side panels, as well as the seat. I'm going to start down here at the throttle body itself. I like to remove this bracket here. It's going to give me a little more clearance so that I can work on the throttle cables here at the throttle body. Okay, this bracket right here attaches the throttle cables to the throttle body. This bracket's going to be reused the OE cables, this bracket is actually part of the cable assembly itself. So Motion Pro has a replacement plate that bolts on to the stock bracket. For now, we need to get it all off the bike, cables off the bike totally. Got a Phillips screwdriver here. You know, we've already been in here before. We did that throttle tube just a few weeks back. And here we are again. See, this is what happens. If I put a part on my bike, and Max sees it, Dad, 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 can I get one of those Motion Pro Rev2 throttles from my R3? Come on, Dad, you got one on your bike. So now here we are, doing the install on the STG R3. Okay, those two screws are out. May need to loosen things up up top to get cable slack, may or may not. Looks like I'll be good to go here. Let's go ahead and get the cables released from the cam down here at the throttle body. Okay, and then take these two fasteners out of this bracket. We'll be reusing those two fasteners as well as this bracket. Okay, make sure you keep these fasteners as well as that bracket. That stuff is all going to be reused. Okay, right here there is a cable tie from the factory that is securing the throttle cables to that uh, little box there that the coils are in. I'm going to try and release the Christmas tree clip. It's got that captured. Get behind there. Not sure if we'll be able to reuse this or if it'll even be necessary to reuse this. But we definitely need to get it off <clears throat> in order to get the cables out. If you look at that right here. 
Again, if you were to want to release it, you'd have to get a little screwdriver or a pick in there, release the tang, and separate it. Okay, like so. Just jumped in there, pulled down on that. So if in fact I do decide the best way to route these cables is reuse that, completely doable. I'll lower the bike down now, we're gonna work on it up here at the throttle. Okay, gotta pull the lever guard we have on Max's bike off. Right off to the side. Throttle housing itself. The way Yamaha designs the bike from the factory, it has the switches are integrated into the throttle assembly. So we will need, because remember we're replacing the switch with this too. Actually, Motion Pro has developed a nice direct fit start-stop switch that we'll be putting on this bike. And uh, we will need to get access to remove that and connect the new one, get the screws out, we'll be able to separate the halves here, like so. There's that throttle tube I literally just put in there a couple of weeks ago. Okay, now the switch is routed through here. Not sure if I'll be able to access this or not. To raise the table up and take a good look in there and see if I can get that out without having to go through fuel tank removal. Now the cables themselves. Separate these from the housing. Here, get this behind the lines and the cables should be able to be fished down. Okay, fuel tank needs to either come up or be removed. Internal hex four up here at the front of the fuel tank cover. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. And then around the tank we have a couple of screws that hold the fuel tank cover on. Go ahead and pull those. Use a Phillips screwdriver or an 8. I already have the screwdriver out, so I'm just going to go that route. Okay, once you have all the fasteners out, the tank cover itself, I grab it by the sides, give it a little bit of a lift up, and then slide it back. You can see we've got two push pins right here on either side. Okay, those need to be engaged, and then of course you have the fasteners from the side here, here, and here, and the one up front. Now we just have the metal fuel tank underneath. You can either lift it up or remove it entirely. So two fasteners here at the front of the tank. 10 hex fasteners.
Once I have these out, kind of lift up on it, decide what I want to do here. I think, you know, just for the sake of this video, it's going to be better if I just simply remove it from the bike. So that is the route we're going to go. Okay, I'll lift the tank up a little bit. We've got a vent hose here up front. I'm going to pull that. We have our fuel pump connector, another vent hose. Pull that vent hose there. Fuel pump connector is right here. And make sure you release the lock. And then work it off. The lock for the fuel line itself. Remember, that's a pressurized line. So we need to release the lock before we can release the line. I have to come to the other side of the bike so I can see that. Now I'm going to just go ahead and take the rear mounting bolts out. Realistically, I could probably do this. That is, replace that stop-start switch without pulling the tank. For the purpose of this video, I'll just pull it. It's going to make a bigger space. It'll be a lot easier to show you guys what we're doing. Okay, fuel line. Got the tank up, resting on the air box. Pull back on the release. There are two tangs here, right? You have to press, press in on these two buttons here. Like so. Push in, rotate, and slide off. You may lose just a little bit of fuel. If you do, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Wipe that up later. Okay, stop start switch. You can see it's right here. Just kind of tug up on that lightly. Push in, release. I'm going to have to release this mount here as well. Goes through this loom. That is reusable, so you want to try not to break that. Pay attention to the routing. Let's go ahead and bring that through. Up here like so, and there is your OE throttle housing. Okay, part of the install is lubing the cables for the Rev2 kit. I've got my V3 Motion Pro cable luber tool here. This thing works pretty sweet. I did this when I installed this kit on my GSXR 1000, and I got to tell you, man, the action on that thing is super smooth. This is worth doing. You could get away with the install without doing this. You know, that said, you know, you got to ask yourself what kind of result do you want. When it comes to the controls, you really shouldn't compromise at all especially the throttle. So this is worth the extra step in my opinion. Get this thing all set up here. Crank down a little bit more. All right, that's in there nice. Really no clean way to do this to be honest with you too. It's, that's why I've got the trash can down here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump that in there and allow it to work all the way down the cable. You can see it, I've got it all the way down now, one last little squirt. Alright, I'm going to get this all cleaned up and when we're back I'll be mounting the cables to the R3. Okay, now let's get ready to install the Rev2 throttle cables. First thing we have to do is understand which one is the pull and which one is the push. On the R3, it's going to be mounted like so, okay, that the cables are going to be on the top. Rotating back, this cable right here clearly is going to be the pull cable. You want to make sure that when you bolt it up down at the bracket they supply, which I've already installed on the bike, that the pull cable is in the correct position. Okay, now I want you to take and 
take the jam nuts. You can see all that cable loop all over this thing, right? That stuff is super slick. I wiped up most of the excess. We'll continue to do that as we go through the process. Really effective tool, really effective lube that they sell to go with it too. You also want to begin by having the jam nut all the way at the top of the elbow too. So you have the maximum amount of throttle cable slack. This just ensures you'll be able to get everything adjusted correctly. If you've watched the video where I installed this on the Gixxer 1000, I stress, man, you just can't have issues with your throttle. It has to be perfect. Perfect action, perfect return, never sticking, zero compromise. Okay, so now I know that this cable right here is my pole cable, okay? The one that is labeled with the Motion Pro logo, or I'm sorry, name down here at the end of the part number, that is going to be the push cable. So it's going to be an easy way to identify them. Let's go ahead and just kind of pull this through now. Let's mock this up. It's the routing, you know, this may or may not change. I'm going to drop it through this bracket here. From here, similar routing that we had. Let's through here. Pass that down through here. Okay, just gonna hold those up here. As you can see, you know, quite a bit of assembly is really needed here to complete this install. Okay, now I'm gonna go down, raise the table and begin to install the cables at the throttle body area. I won't tighten anything up down there, but I'm going to get them installed. I've already got the bracket that Motion Pro sent on the bike ready to go down there. Okay, first thing you want to do is make sure you've got the cables routed correctly. You can clearly see right here that I have the pull cable at the back, the push cable at the front, throttle body. The pull cable needs to be all the way at the back. So in order to install this, just kind of slide it through the groove in the bracket, get the cable down in there. You've got a ton of slack right now, so this is gonna be relatively easy to get on the throttle body. You shouldn't have any difficulty with that at all. Just finger tight right now. Get this over the cam here, like so. I'm sorry this angle is horrible. Just so tight down here, okay? This will, I promise you, will all make sense to you when you're doing this project yourself. And the real meat and potatoes of the work is done up at the clip-on bar itself. Let's go ahead and get this slid in there. Tons of cable lube on it too right now. I just kind of show you that one's dipped up in there. I'm going to get the other cable in, and when we come back, we'll be up at the clip on. Let's go ahead, and here's the Rev2 throttle housing assembly. One thing that's cool about this, if you converted your bike to a race bike, okay, and you're running clip-ons, you don't have to drill any holes for this. It mounts uh, via friction, compression, tension up at the clip-on. See the quality of that? It's a good looking product. Like I said, I've got experience with this already. Solid stuff, really dig it. The cam we're gonna use, we're gonna use the RR cam. That's the same one that I've got on my bike, okay? It's not the quickest opening, but it's progressive. The initial crack open is really smooth, so when you're heeled way over, you know, and you need to get back to the throttle to balance the bike, right? Get a little weight to the rear. It's as smooth as it can be, the initial application, and from there, as you're driving, it ramps up a lot harder at the end by the time you have the bike more upright. So that's a, a great way to do it. I've already used it in my bike. I really dig it, and I'm sure Max is gonna feel the same way. The throttle tube and the cam are two pieces. Just to give you an idea of how they go together, it's like that, it's a good, snug fit. Make sure the inners of the tube are clear and obstruction free. Normally I would lube inside of here. We've already got 
a nice thin layer of grease on this clip-on tube right now so I don't feel the need to really add any additional, okay? So let's go ahead and slide this on now. Just roll it around a little bit. Just make sure everything is obstruction free. T the tolerances are all good. Okay, and the cables, kind of got them positioned here. You wanna make sure you haven't put any twist into the cable. Also the cables are offering as much slack as possible right now, which is good. Pull the cable. There's our pull cable. You can see clearly that is going to work. Let's go ahead and get this one installed. Inside the cam, rotate it around. Having all the slack in the cable makes this a whole heck of a lot easier. Line it up and pop it in. Boom, now we're ready for the housing. Slide the protective boot back. You wanna make sure the cables, and you can see how they've designed this, right? They slide together. So make sure that they're engaged properly. That cable lube is just so darn slippery, it, it makes the whole, whole project that much more difficult when you have to handle stuff. Okay, slide those two back together. Make sure they're lined up like so. Let's get our throttle halves. It's important that the rib, the raised portion on the throttle cables engages in that channel. Like so. Like so. Kind of rotate around like that. Two fasteners. These are four mil internal hex. This kit ships complete with grips. We're gonna use them on this bike. Max had actually been asking for some thinner grips. And these fit the build. The driven grips we have on there are a little thicker than what he wants. Okay, so really not very tight right now. I wanna be able to move that around. Want to make sure you have adequate gap between the end of the bar and the throttle tube. If you look over at the other side, you can see the way that we had the bike set up previously. You've probably got a, about a half an inch there, maybe a little bit more. So I want to make sure that we're mimicking that. Okay, so it's even from side to side. Really important the controls are uniform. I'm going to go ahead and snug this up now. Sure that's good and tight. Protective boot, this hold the halves together as well as present, prevents debris from entering. Slides on like so, just like that. Now that's all sealed up. You have adjustments for both cables. Oh, he's gonna love that, that is definitely shorter. Up here, you wanna make sure that you have as little slack as possible. We're gonna go through all that later for now, I wanna make sure that we can get the start-stop switch on the bike, have that all wired up before we finish the final location or we establish the final location for this, okay? I don't wanna adjust anything until I have the controls right where I want them, and I'd also prefer to have the grip on the throttle tube before I do that. Okay, here we go, the Motion Pro Enhanced Direct Fit Stop-Start Switch. This thing's gonna plug right into the harness, super bitchin'. No need to wire this up yourself. This is something new that they're doing. It used to be that the start-stop switches, you had to wire each one up. Now they've come out with a couple of direct fits. I've been lucky enough that the last two installs I've done have both been that way. Okay, so just plug and play, super nice. We will be doing one on the uh, Ninja 400 pretty soon that is not plug and play so you're going to get to see what it takes to get one all wired up see what that process looks like okay let's see what this is going to tolerance here is pretty tight 
I may need to loosen that throttle up just a tickle. Let me see if I can get it in here and get it wound around. Nope, I'm going to loosen the throttle up just a little bit, let it come out board. You may eventually end up moving the brake a little bit. We'll get that sorted out. I always encourage anytime you're working with your controls that you just really spend a lot of focused, really good focused time on getting them dialed in perfect. Zero compromise when it comes to your controls. You know, a project like even this quick turn throttle, let's say, hey, I've got a race weekend. You know, or I've got a, a track weekend coming up. Man, I really want that quick turn. I'm going to have it show up on a Thursday. I'm going to put it on Thursday night, piece of cake, and then go head to the track, load up, you know, and head to the track Friday. I really don't recommend that with anything control-oriented that requires actual time, like clip-ons or this throttle. That, this kind of stuff, you know, you want to make sure that you've given yourself ample opportunity to get it dialed in just right and you're not putting yourself in a situation where it's all rush rush because that is just not how you want to do it okay now we've definitely got plenty of uh plenty of room to work with here go ahead and snug this up the control switch that they have on here the new stop start switch turn the wheels a little bit steve is uh also designed so that there is no need to drill holes in the clip on tube okay just tighten it down there's a little rubber pad in there that when you tighten it it squeezes and kind of grabs onto the bars nice and tight looks great we still have plenty of room here to gap like we did on the other side it's really really close if anything, maybe I'll cheat the brake in just a tiny little bit, All right? But that'll be fine tuning. We might even do that off camera. Okay, let's get that uh, right about there. Bring each one down, just finger tight. Once they're both run down, go ahead and put some torque. Make sure nice, even result. Okay. Now we can do a little bit of adjusting here with the throttle cables. Each cable, both the pull and the push, both have adjusters on them. Makes this process really simple. Let's back off the locks. Okay, now let's start with the pole. There's definitely a little bit of slack there. What I like to do is, you know, I'll put my finger down here too and see how tight that cable is. Okay, that one's pretty snug. A lot of play in the, the push cable, so we're going to dial this one in. What I'm doing is I'm basically feeling the cable down here. I'm going to run it out. Still quite a bit of slack in that. You can see I've really got this run out pretty far. I could leave it, but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make just a slight adjustment down here at the cable itself so I don't have to run this one that far out. So when I come back, I'll have done that, and we'll be back up here at the push cable, and I'll be dialing in the tension. Very little slack there. That's where we're going to stop. Let's go ahead and snug up the jam nuts. Love the quality of the cables. I mean, certainly if you've been in motorcycling for any period of time, you know, Motion Pro and cables, I and mean, those two names really go together. Great history there. Some of the cable loop. 
once again, this is not final. This will be fine-tuned for sure. Now, before I go any further, let's just kind of sweep the bars. And all through the sweep, we're checking that snap back, making sure we don't feel any binding. Make sure you don't see any conflicts here, cables banging against something, creating issues. I still do have that OEM guide here. Is that still necessary or not? That remains to be seen. That little uh, zip tie mount, I may actually put that back on the bike down here. Okay, super easy. It's, I don't think it'd be a big deal. You could just leave them loose too. You know, that's optional stuff. So we're pretty close now. Now we got to get the wiring harness routed for the stop start switch. This R3 has been further modified. We've installed the Woodcraft key switch eliminator on this motorcycle. Okay. Notice the key cylinder. That bad boy is gone. And this Woodcraft eliminator, what it does is it allows you to remove the key switch from the motorcycle completely and then all of your on off switching is done right here on the suzuki i have that installed and it worked perfectly with the motion pro stop start switch so my expectations are that it'll work the same way here with the r3 get that engaged nicely Make sure this is routed well properly secured I've eliminated quite a few of the OEM connectors and harnesses that were formerly residing down in here. They're just not needed anymore. So we've got quite a bit of room to work with there, which is nice. Let's get this bad boy put back together here. Okay, snapped in place. All right, I'm just going to kind of cable tie this bad boy. Right up about here. Trim the end. All right, we're a lot closer to having this project wrapped up. You know, obviously I can't start it and test the switch without having the fuel tank on the bike. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through routing down here, make sure everything looks good. I'm gonna decide whether or not I wanna put that little cable tie here on the throttle cables. I think I might want to, just a little more professional, reusing that, and uh, we'll get the fuel tank back on the bike and come back and test it, see if the switch works. Okay, it's time to install the grips. Max decided he wants to go with the ones Motion Pro supplied. Always remember, the one with the larger diameter inner hole, that's gonna be for your throttle side. If you've watched any of the videos where I install grips, you're already gonna know I always use grip glue. I'm super picky about that. I want my controls a certain way every time. A little trick I've started using to make sure I don't get the glue under the throttle tube is grab a roll of electrical tape and I already wiped everything down here to degrease it. Okay, and just catch that edge of the throttle tube where it meets the bar. No reason to go any further than that. That is gonna prevent grip glue from getting underneath the throttle tube. I've done this a couple times now, it works really good. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of grip glue in from both sides. And I like to take this old screwdriver I have. Clean this up a little bit here as we go. Let's find the top of the grip and Gonna have a little excess spill out, totally normal. Let's get the end of the grip up there. Now when you're putting the grip on the bike, very important to note, you don't wanna get it so close to the throttle housing that it's actually touching it. Okay, it's really important here that there is no contact between the grip and the throttle housing, it's really biting on there, super tight. So 
So I'm just going to keep working this up. Like so. Before you ride it, when you're using grip glue, you want to let it sit at least a few hours. Let's keep working that. And when we come back, I'll be cleaning this up, have it all cleaned up, get that grip safety wire to be ready to sit and dry until we're ready to ride it this weekend. Okay, just finished wiping this up. You wanna try and get the excess off. I definitely could have pushed a little harder. My first move on this would have helped me out a little bit. This is a pretty snug fit. And now just grab that tape, okay? And pull that off. And you'll see that there is no opportunity for any grip glue to get in between that throttle sleeve and our clip-on tube. Need to safety wire it now. Just checking to make sure everything's good and free. Get this all evened up here. With the grip, you really want to be sure that it doesn't come over the edge of the throttle tube at all. And also that it doesn't come in contact with the throttle housing. You can see in both cases here, that is exactly where it needs to be. So, a little bit of safety wire. Along with reinstallation of the lever guard on the brake side here. And we'll have this pretty much wrapped up. Maybe some final adjustments to the throttle itself. Little piece of safety wire. This helps lock everything in place. Once you cut the tail off, you want to roll this over. I'm probably going to shorten this just a little bit more. I like to roll that over and then I'll push it in to the grip so that it kind of digs in so you don't have any sharp edges exposed later on. You don't want to tear your gloves up or your hand, of course. You can use the end of the side cutters maybe the end of a flat bladed screwdriver, either way. Just push it in there, kind of dig it into the rubber of the grip. Make sure it's out of the way of the rider's hand and glove. Okay, both the grips are on. Let's start by sweeping the bars. And I want to watch these throttle cables. Make sure they're not binding anywhere. Check the snapback, check the return of this throttle. Make sure it is strong in every position. Cannot stress this enough. Your throttle sticks, you're having a bad day. Okay, so at every position, I'm gonna check that. Off camera, I've already begun to dial in the free play in the throttle. What I like to do, it's kind of a blend here. If I can reach the throttle cables, which I still can on this bike, I can feel how much slack I have here at the cam that is on the throttle body, right? And I'll dial a lot of that out. Once I've got that dialed out a bit, then I'll begin sweeping them back and forth. And from here, you can pretty much, and that, that's pretty tight right there, you can pretty much set it to the point where you have zero free play. And every rider's different. Some riders, they want a little gap. Okay. So you can see that's really tight now. That's all the free play there is. I'm rechecking the throttle return everywhere. Okay, now let's make sure this is all tight. Slide the boot back over like so. Okay, let's start the bike. 
I have the key switch eliminator from Woodcraft installed on this. You can see that just that works fine. Start the bike. So even with the Motion Pro switch, no problem. With the bike running now. You see how I swept the bars back and forth. What I was looking for is to see if the RPMs picked up on their own. If by turning the bars, it does put a little tension on the cables. If you have this over adjusted, if you have it too tight, rotating the bars, you'll hear the RPMs change a little bit. That's an indication that you have it too tight. You do want to have just the littlest bit of free play in here. Okay, most people want it about that tight. Some people like a larger gap but never make it so tight that when you're sweeping the bars back and forth, the RPMs of the motorcycle pick up. Okay, so from here, what's left? Very simple stuff we're not gonna show on camera. I need to reinstall a fuel tank cover, all of the body work, at which point, of course, I don't ride this bike, Max rides this bike, and I need to make sure it's perfect. Like I said in the opening of this video, your controls, there is zero room for error. They have to be perfect. And that's even more the case when your 13 year old son is out riding this motorcycle. So I'll do a little road test around the shop to make sure we're good to go. I already can tell from the work I've done here, it's not gonna have any issues. I want you to take this that serious. Zero margin for error when you're installing anything throttle related on your bike. This is a bitchin' upgrade on the R3. You're gonna have more clearance between the bodywork, okay? Because remember, your stock throttle, your, your cables are down. You're gonna have more clearance now between the bodywork and the throttle. I might even be able to drop the clip-ons a little bit. That remains to be seen. I have to have the bodywork back on to determine that, but you definitely pick up more clearance under here. We now are able to install those different cams. I have the RR cam in here. There's one cam that's a little bit quicker, so if Max wants it to open wider, faster, we can install that one, or conversely, if he wants to slow it down, we can swap all those out by just disassembling the throttle housing, pulling the tube off, slide a new cam on, slip it back on, everything back together, readjust the throttle, and you're good to go. It's really, really easy to do, so you can tune the throttle to best meet your needs. Once again, if any of the steps you see here you don't feel comfortable with, take the bike to a licensed motorcycle mechanic because it has to be perfect. This is the Motion Pro Rev2 throttle kit install on our 2015 STG Yamaha R3 project bike.